Spike was one of the first brawlers that was added to Brawl Stars, and along with Crow, they were the first legendaries in the game. Legendary brawlers are typically supposed to have incredibly unique mechanics, and this definitely applied to Spike upon his release. His long range attack combined with its cactus needles allowed him to cover a large area, and his super was actually the first ability in the game that could slow down other brawlers. This uniqueness would eventually fade away as other brawlers were added, but Spike still remained a fan favorite in the Brawl Stars community. So in this video, we're going to go over the entire history of Spike, and we're going to uncover why he has consistently been one of the best brawlers in the game throughout his existence. Before we start though, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It is completely free and I would really appreciate it. As mentioned, Spike was one of the original 15 brawlers that was in Brawl Stars when the beta was released on June 14th, 2017. Considering the fact that there's now 77 brawlers in the game, that's pretty crazy to think about. Amongst these 15 brawlers, Spike was one of the best. However, since he was a legendary and incredibly rare, not many people got to experience his strength, but for those who did have him, it was easy wins left and right. This led to Spike getting his first nerf pretty quickly, with it coming only two weeks after his release. On June 27, 2017, Spike's health was nerfed from 700 to 600. For how long his range was, he was also pretty tanky and could survive more than he probably should have been able to, so this nerf was definitely needed. Although, this really wouldn't change Spike's strength, as his appeal was still with his attack and his super. Like I said earlier, Spike's super was the first ability in Brawl Stars that could slow other brawlers. With this being the case, it gave him an advantage over every other brawler that had zero counters as well. So yeah, a little HP nerf basically did nothing. So Spike's super received a nerf on September 4th, 2017, so that the super's slow duration would decrease once a brawler was outside of its radius. The slow effect would linger for a bit after walking out of the super, which made it even more painful, so this nerf gave enemy brawlers a better chance for survival after escaping the super. I guess after this nerf though, the Brawl Stars team felt like his super was a bit too weak, so they decided to actually buff it next. On October 5th, 2017, the projectile speed of Spike's super was increased. Honestly, Spike probably didn't need this buff, because even though he wasn't a top 3 brawler in the game at this point, he was still probably about A tier and a solid pick in every game mode, but he got a buff anyway. So yeah, uh, congrats Spike. When looking at the entire scope of Spike's history, the beta is a much smaller percentage of it compared to other brawlers. Relative to Piper and Nita, who I've also made videos on, Spike has had much fewer changes during 2017 and 2018. To be honest, that really is a good thing though when you look at it. It shows how on a fundamental level, Spike was a brawler who could remain in a balanced place in the game without needing any major adjustments. Some more recent brawlers have struggled with this, such as Kit, as he's just kind of a fundamentally impossible brawler to balance but Spike overall is just a well-designed brawler. Anyway, Spike's next change would be the addition of his first star power on December 7, 2017, and it is called Fertilize. Upon release, when standing in his super, Spike would heal 600 health per second. This may seem incredibly broken because Spike had only 600 health in the game before this update, but his HP would be multiplied by four, just like every other brawler in the game, so it made the star power much more reasonable. All things considered though, it was one of the better star powers in the game, but nothing totally broken as well. Spike normally throws his super away from himself or over walls to reach brawlers further away, but this star power gave Spike the potential to play more aggressive and heal himself while pursuing other brawlers that have been trapped in his super. This really helped Spike in his two most popular game modes, Brawl Ball and Gem Grab. If you had him, he was basically a must pick in these game modes because his overall utility was just so good, and this led the Brawl Stars wanting to tone down the star power just a little bit, so they nerfed it on December 18th, 2017, less than two weeks after its release. They would nerf its healing per second from 600 to 500, making it a little less effective. What's really funny is that just a month after nerfing Spike, they would buff him again. And just like most of his balances so far, it was a fairly minor tweak. His reload speed was decreased from 2.2 seconds to 2 seconds. A faster attack speed is never a bad thing, and in the case of Spike, it definitely helped him. One thing that's pretty interesting that you'll realize as we go through Spike's history is that he receives quite a few changes, but most of them are pretty minor and only slight stat changes. And once again, this will just show how balanced Spike is as a concept. And as I'm saying this, I'm just not realizing that the next three changes for Spike are pretty big. Beyond those three changes though, you'll see this trend start to emerge a bit. 
I promise. On March 23rd, 2018, Spike received three changes. His main projectile size was increased, and then every brawler's movement speed and projectile speeds were increased as well. I've touched on this in previous videos, but having this rework to every brawler in the game made it feel much more fluid and made gameplay feel more dynamic. At this point in the meta, Spike was still a good brawler, but nothing too crazy. His most dominant game mode was Gem Grab, as it had been through the majority of his history, and he was still decent in other game modes such as Bounty, Showdown, and Brawl Ball. However, this was the first time in Brawl Stars history where he wasn't one of the top brawlers in the game, but also he was still far from being horrible as well. And now we have to fast forward from March all the way to December 5th, 2018, right before the global release, to get Spike's next change. During this change, he received some pretty significant adjustments to the spikes on his attacks. Their range was nerfed from 5 tiles to 4.33 tiles, and then the spikes were reworked to split in a set pattern. Looking back at it, the fact that his spikes were random would have been super annoying back in the day. I honestly didn't even know that this was a thing, but I'm really glad now that I wasn't playing Brawl Stars back in the beta. Now with spike shots, you can predict where they're going to land, but the randomness would have just been an absolute pain for your opponents and even for yourself as well, because you can't predict where they're going. And just like that, we've covered everything for Spike during Brawl Stars beta. He received quite a few changes, but most of them were pretty small, and Spike remained a pretty consistent brawler throughout. Everything else from here on out that happened to Spike was after Brawl Stars Global Release. We have a lot more to talk about, so let's not waste any more time. The first change that Spike received was his remodel. He was looking pretty flat and devoid of saturation, and this remodel made him look much more vibrant. However, default Spike wasn't the only thing that got remodeled. His Pinky Spike skin also got a remodel. This skin existed with Spike throughout the Brawl Stars beta, but I wanted to wait and talk about it after it got remodeled. It was renamed to Sakura Spike, got its own unique projectiles, and was increased from 30 gems to 80 gems. That's a really steep price increase, but when you look at how much better the skin looks, I think a 50 gem increase was honestly justified. The next change Spike received was on April 15th, 2019, and it was a pretty minor one. Spike was buffed to take into account added range from projectile splitting during quick fire, and he also received some touch-ups to his attack effects. Let's go ahead and see where Spike was in the meta now that we're a few months into Brawl Stars global release. To be honest, there isn't too much new to report here, he was just about the same. You know, a decent brawler with viability pretty much everywhere, but not one of the top brawlers in the game either. A solid spot to be, but a pretty boring spot to be honest. Don't worry though, that's gonna change here pretty soon. July 10th, 2019 was the beginning of Spike becoming a nuisance for a lot of people. It wasn't due to some insane buff or some crazy rework, but it was simply due to the addition of his curveball star power. In hindsight though, that is a pretty significant addition. Every brawler in the game received their second star powers, and Curveball was definitely one of the better ones upon release. Of course, as you all know, this star power makes the spikes from his attack curve and makes Spike cover a much larger area, making it much easier to land shots. Even though Fertilize was still a decent option with its healing being pretty decent, the ability to land attacks easier from a distance just made Curveball better. It's safe to say that this star power made Spike much better in the meta. He was already decent as I previously mentioned, but Curveball made him S tier and one of the top brawlers in the entire game. Although, to go along with Spike getting his best star power, he also got one of his worst skins two days later. On July 12th, 2019, we got Robo Spike as a part of the Summer of Robots skins. Now, to be honest, Robo Spike isn't entirely bad. I actually kind of like his attack animations, but this skin to me is absolutely not worth 149 gems and 5,000 bling. It is definitely one of the more overpriced skins in the game, if you ask me. Going back to Curveball, since it had become pretty insane, Spike's next three changes were dedicated to balancing Curveball and making Fertilize a better option. On August 29th, 2019, Fertilize's healing was increased from 500 to 600, and then increased from 600 to 800 on October 23rd. Then, during the following month on November 7th, Curveball's angle was nerfed from 100 to 50, and the distance was also decreased from 200 to 100. So now that I've thrown all of that at you, let's break it down. Basically, these changes were massive in terms of shifting the star power balance for Spike, as now both were viable options. Since Curveball still made it easier to hit shots, it was still the better option for casual players, but a lot of pro players switched to Fertilize so that that way they could benefit from its healing and play Spike more aggressively. It's rare when you have a situation where both of a brawler's star powers are viable, 
but that was the case in this moment with Spike. Interestingly enough, Spike's next balance change was a buff. At this point, he wasn't an S tier brawler anymore because he was outshined by newer ranged brawlers like Mr. P and B, but he was still a really good brawler, so this doesn't make really much sense to me why they buffed him. Anyway, on February 19th, 2020, Spike's main attack damage was increased from 480 to 520 per spike. I guess the goal was to make him a more competitive option next to these newer brawlers, but I still found this buff to be a little unnecessary. And did the buff work? Well, a little bit. More damage is never a bad thing, and this allowed Spike a little bit of extra viability in the meta, where he was already pretty solid. Spike's next big change was the addition of his gadget on March 17th, 2020, which was Popping Pincushion. This gadget was pretty simple, as when activated, Spike would shoot out multiple waves of spikes that would do a little bit of damage. One thing that's pretty interesting though, is that this gadget would also be affected by Curveball, which was pretty unique. But this would be later removed on May 13th as a nerf. Even with the Curveball effect, this gadget was pretty average. Not horrible, but also not game-breaking either. Its viability was primarily as a defensive mechanism, if an El Primo jumped on you or a Mortis dashed on you or something like that, but it was also pretty incredible in Heist if you could get Spike directly on top of the safe. Some brawlers got massive buffs from their gadgets, but Spike pretty much remained the same because his gadget was somewhat niche, like I said. Still a good brawler, but nothing game-breaking. At this point, I kind of feel like a broken record talking about how Spike is a good brawler, but it's been true every time I've said it. Spike is just that guy, for real. Okay, let's quickly go through the rest of 2020. Then after that, we'll talk about the best change that Spike has ever received. On April 7th, 2020, Curveball was actually buffed, so its angle was 75 instead of 50. Curveball had fallen off a little bit since its nerf, and this buff made it a little bit better. Fertilize still remained the better competitive option at the time, but Curveball became an increasingly better option for everyone. Spike then got another set of buffs on September 10th, 2020, where his main attack damage was increased from 520 to 560, and his super recharge rate was slightly increased as well. Funny enough, this damage buff was enough to make him really good in the meta at the time, despite it not being anything too major. This meta at the time featured a lot of ranged brawlers being dominant, like Carl, Colette, Brock, and Spike was right in the middle of that mix. He was definitely a top 5 brawler in the game at this point, when you combine this damage buff along with Curveball making a comeback. And during the same month of September, Spike also got another skin, with that being Mask Spike. For a 29 gem and 1000 bling skin, you're actually getting a lot of value here. While there's no animation changes or different textures, Spike has a bunch of different masks that he can spawn with in battle, making it like a bunch of skins in one. If you're looking for a cheap 29 gem skin to buy, I would 100% go with this one. Definitely one of the best value skins in the entire game, if you ask me. And the last change that Spike received in 2020 was a slight nerf. On December 15th, 2020, Spike's reload speed was increased from 2 to 2.1 seconds. Even though reload speed nerfs tend to be pretty significant, it didn't affect Spike too much. He still remained one of the better bars in the game, just not top 5 anymore. Now I mentioned earlier that after 2020 came the best change that Spike has ever received, and that was the addition of Dark Lord Spike during February 2021. Now I know this is definitely a hot take, especially considering the somewhat recent addition of Spike's only legendary skin, but this is my personal favorite Spike skin. It gives Spike a super menacing vibe, has awesome animation, and even gives Spike voice lines through his pins, which is an awesome touch. And for this to be 149 gems, it was great value. I would recommend buying this skin, but unfortunately since it's a Lunar New Year skin, it's not going to come back, which is pretty unfortunate. So if you want an epic Spike skin, then your only option is Robo Spike. Oh well. The first balance that Spike received in 2021 was actually a buff that completely negated his last nerf. On April 7th, 2021, his reload speed was changed back to 2 seconds compared to 2.1 seconds. I mean, the nerf didn't really hurt Spike that much, but I guess the Brawl Stars devs weren't happy with where he was in the meta for some reason. I'll be honest, little changes like this don't make that much sense to me. The nerf was fine and Spike was still good, so why change it back? Anyway, Spike also got his true silver and true gold skins on this day as well. Not not much to say here, they look cool, but aren't really anything to write home about. But this next change though is absolutely something to write home about, and it was the addition of Spike's second gadget on July 8th, 2021, 
life plant. Now when we talk about game changing gadgets, this is absolutely one of them. Upon release, when activated, the cactus would spawn with 3500 HP and then when destroyed would heal for 1000 HP within a small radius. Being able to deploy what is basically a shield three times a game that can also heal you when destroyed is absolutely insane when you think about it. While popping pincushion was still a solid option in heist, Life Plant basically became the go-to gadget everywhere. One fun fact with this gadget was that Spike's fertilized star power could actually heal plant life as well as Spike at the same time. Of course, this was later fixed, but I found it to be a pretty interesting fact. For the remainder of 2021, Spike didn't receive any more balance changes, but he still received a few minor changes that are worth mentioning. On September 28, 2021, he received a fix where his life plant gadget wouldn't get launched by jump pads. And then on October 27, 2021, his class was changed from damage dealer to sharpshooter. These changes didn't really do anything for Spike, but the fix for his gadget was pretty cool. I guess. Then the last change that Spike received in 2021 was his Logmas Spike skin. This was one of the Brawler Day skins for 2021, and it's one of the better ones if you ask me. It's kind of cool how this is a collab with Clash Royale. Logmas is Clash Royale's version of Brawler Days, and I think it's always neat to see intersections between two Supercell games. For a 79 gem and a 2750 bling skin, I think it's honestly really good, and when it was released, it was only 49 gems, which is absolutely insane. I still think Mass Spike provides more value for your gems, but this skin is a really solid option even after its price increase. Okay, so we're gonna power through these last three years, but before we do that, let's do a quick meta check. At the beginning of 2022, Spike had risen once again to being a top five brawler in the game. This time, it wasn't necessarily due to him being strong, but it was mainly because of how other brawlers were. This meta featured a lot of tanks and throwers being really strong, such as Daryl, Rosa, Grom, and Sprout, and all elements of Spike's kit could deal with these brawlers. His high damage could work against tanks, and his super and curveball star power could get around walls in order to deal with the throwers. This strength resulted in Spike's first balance of the year being a nerf, and it was pretty big. On April 27, 2020, his life plant's gadget's health was nerfed from 3,500 all the way down to 1,750. This was a massive nerf and it would take Spike away from his S tier position. He was still good, as he always has been, but having the gadget's health cut in half eliminated some of Spike's survivability. Funny enough though, it still remained one of the better gadgets in the game. That's how strong it was before. Spike's next change was the addition of another skin on May 13th, and this was a Pyro Spike. I'll be honest, whenever I play against a Spike, it seems like they are always using this skin. I don't know why, maybe I'm missing something, but I see it all of the time. Maybe it's because upon release, it was 49 gems, which is actually really good for what you're getting, but it's almost as common as Edgar players using the thumbs down pin. If you're an Edgar player, sorry, but not sorry. But definitely a solid skin, even though it's now 79 gems. Let's fast forward to the end of 2022, and Brawl Stars as a whole was undergoing some major overhauls. The Gears update that had come a while ago was finally reworked into the system that we have now, finally correcting the worst update in Brawl Stars history. And with this, the concept of Mythic Gears were also added, giving major buffs to the brawlers that got them. Spike didn't get his Mythic Gear in the first wave, but he got his in the second wave on December 12th, 2022. This gear is called Sticky Spikes, and upon release, it would slow enemies within his super for 50% which is an insane increase from the base low. Now, even though this mythic gear was pretty insane, Spike's position in the meta didn't change too much. There were just so many other ranged brawlers at the time that were better, like B, Gust, and Otis, that Spike was just kind of an afterthought. Although for him, being an afterthought is still being a good brawler. Spike's next balance change wouldn't come for a while as it would be midway through 2023 in June. In this wave, he got two buffs. His popping pincushion damage was increased from 520 to 800 damage per needle, and his fertilized star power was buffed from 800 to 1000 healing per second. Now this right here marks an interesting point in the history of Spike, because after these buffs was probably the worst that he's ever been. Now I know that makes no sense, but let me explain. The gadgets and star powers that got buffed here still remain the weaker options, so this update did really nothing to help Spike, while other brawlers would just creep over him in the meta. Now don't get me wrong, Spike was still relevant, 
but really only slightly above average at this point. Although, this would change pretty quickly a few months later. But before that, all brawlers in the game had their power level scaling changed from 5 to 10% with each level increase. This didn't change any interactions, but it was still worth mentioning. Spike stagnation in the meta was short-lived after the addition of his hypercharge on September 8th, 2023. It's called Blooming Season, and it gives Spike Super a 20% larger area while also giving the normal stat buffs like damage, speed, and shield. This initial wave of hypercharges was pretty interesting because since only a few brawlers got them, all of them catapulted to being top brawlers in the meta. And yeah, this was definitely the case for Spike. Once again, Spike was one of the more dominant brawlers in the meta, with very few brawlers that could deal with him. Really, the only ones that could were those with longer ranges, and those that also had hypercharges. So yeah, definitely a very balanced meta if you ask me. Speaking of balance, Spike got a bunch of changes towards the end of 2023. He received three separate changes to both of his gadgets and then to his fertilized star power. Basically, all of them were reworked to scale with power levels now, which resulted in buffs all around. However, pretty much all brawlers in the game got similar changes as there were like over 90 balances in total. So this didn't do much to buff Spike in the grand scheme of things. However, one change that did affect Spike was a nerf to his Mythic Gear. On December 12th, 2023, his Mythic Gear slow was nerfed from 50% down to 30%, which is pretty sizable. One thing I always say about gears is that they're supposed to function like mini star powers, but Spike's Mythic Gear was basically a full-blown star power that could be paired with one of his other two. This nerf was definitely needed, and while his Mythic Gear is still strong, it isn't nearly as strong. All right, we got two more sets of changes to cover, so let's get into it. First up was the addition of Spike's first legendary skin, and that is Toon Spike. This was added on January 12th, 2024, and it is one of the most unique skins in the entire game. The Powerpuff Girl style animation is super unique, and it really makes this skin stand out. However, I still stand by the fact that Dark Lord Spike is his best skin. I would absolutely say that Toon Spike is his second best, but I personally just like Dark Lord Spike a little bit more. Anyway, the last change that Spike has received up until this point was a set of five different changes to his hypercharge. On February 27th, 2024, he got three nerfs, a rework, and then a buff. It's safe to say at this point that hyperchargers had become a little too strong for certain brawlers and dominated the meta a little too much, so some big changes were definitely needed. While Spike got a lot of changes here, he wasn't the only brawler. His hypercharge is still pretty good and makes him a better brawler as a whole, but his overall strength and versatility was toned down a lot. Okay, so even though this is the conclusion, we still have one more change to talk about. Literally only a couple of hours ago from when I'm recording this script, we got another Spike skin, and that is Poop Spike. You know, I'll be completely honest, I, I, I really don't know what to say about this skin. <laughs> You know, it's a decent skin in terms of its quality in animations and things like that, but I just, I can't defend this skin existing. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, now on to the conclusion. You know what's crazy? Even after those last two nerfs to his Mythic Gear and Hypercharge, Spike's position in the meta barely changed. Even to this day, Spike is one of the better brawlers in the entire game, and it has been that way pretty much throughout his entire history. Throughout all of these balances and meta shifts over the course of Brawl Stars, Spike being a good brawler is one thing that has remained constant. If you don't have him maxed out yet, I would definitely recommend doing so, as he is a pretty safe pick in most game modes and also in ranked. Thank you all for watching this Brawl Stars history video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to watch these two videos right here, and I hope you all have a nice rest of your day.